thank you god and i like like just, just studying the word you know and um that's all we can do uh and and that's the best way to uh i got the corpse up there okay so the, the best way to understand what god wants for us uh, for us uh is to get into his word and uh, we know that definition is the key so we define uh in the process of defining every single word in the bible and we just keep going until uh we get it and we're, we're never going to get it so we'll just keep going you know and i was reading this in um clinic and strong i didn't even get to hastings i'm sure hastings when when they get on a subject they they just go on and they talk about every uh Everybody, you know, uh, Chinese, Buddhists, Hindus, uh, Greeks, Romans, Christians, and they break down each uh, each category uh, on uh, how they deal with death and things like that. So I just looked up death in, in McClinic and Strong, and this is how far I got here. And uh, I guess we can start reading some of this, or I can give you definitions. Um, I guess we can run into definitions as we go along. But anyway, uh, um, death uh, properly, and I don't have the proper fonts for the Greek, but that should be muth. Uh, is it muth? Yeah, it probably is. That's muth. And, uh, of course, the Greek here is thanatos, T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S. And hopefully, you know, we uh, as we go along here, we, we learn uh, these letters, the Greek. And... Um, we understand that uh, Thanatos is means death, and um, Jim always says that uh, it's not annihilation; it's separation, and that's basically what it is. Because uh, in my readings, uh, we, we find that uh, you know when, when the body dies, uh, we we believe in the soul, we believe in the spirit, and uh, we get separated. Uh, the body and uh, the body dies, goes into the ground or wherever it goes, it decays, it goes back to the dust. Uh, with, was back to the earth. Uh, God gave it, and He took it back. So, uh, uh, but the spirit goes on somewhere, you know, and that's that's uh, the big mystery for <laughs> for us to find out, you know, uh, where, where the uh, the soul goes and where the spirit goes. Uh, but it's not with the body, so that's what we know, and it's a separation. So there's there's really no logical definition of death, you know. It has been generally agreed upon. So, hey, you know, you could start right there, and that's that's true. Uh, the, the point was much contested with in the 17th century uh, by the Cartesian and other theologians and philosophers. Since death can be regarded in various points of view, the descriptions of it must necessarily vary. If we consider uh, the state of a dead man as it strikes the senses, death is the cessation of natural life. So that's uh, kind of a definition we, we can agree on. Uh, so, uh, not without getting into the theological and, and, and spiritual realm of it, you know, death is the cessation of natural life. So, if we consider the the cause That's of it from McClinic and Strong's, ain't it? I'm reading from the McClinic and Strong's, ain't yeah. it? All right. Yeah, and no, I'm reading along with you. Okay. So, if we consider the the cause of death, we we may place it in that permanent an entire cessation of the feeling and motion of the body, which results from the destruction of the body. Uh, among theologians, death is commonly said to consist in the separation of the soul and body. So that's what uh, most of us believe, implying that the soul still exists when the body perishes. Among ecclesiastical fathers, Tertullian calls it the disunion of the body and soul. And a lot of these guys... Uh, uh, have some weird uh, the, the praying for the dead. I mean, we, we, we know that that's, there's no sense in praying for the dead, to the dead, you know, about the dead. Uh, somebody dies, that's it. They're going where they're supposed to go, either heaven or hell. And there's no, no sense of prayer. Uh, they, they can't help you uh, by you praying to them. Uh, they're not coming back here as guardian angels or or something like that to, to look over you. Uh, I, I see that all the time. Oh, they're looking over you. You know, my father's been dead for 20 years. He's been looking over me for 20 years. No, he's not. You know, uh, he's dead. He's either in heaven or hell. You know, and some of these early church fathers, they, they were praying to the dead for some reason. I don't know. 
Uh, so uh, Cicero defines death to be the departure of the mind from the body. Uh, there's a passage in uh, Hebrews 4.12. Uh, it's sometimes cited on this subject, but it has, has nothing to do with it. We can look at that real quick. Hebrews 4.12. I might have had it up here, but uh, no. Uh, Hebrews 4.12. Yeah, real quick here. 4.12. Uh, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrows and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So I don't think that has anything to do with death, and you're right about that. It really doesn't have anything the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. So, uh, but the word of God, and we, we spent a week or two talking about the word of God, and we know what that is. That's the logos. And it does it does give life. Can, can you expound on that verse? Because that's kind of one that, that really hangs me up sometimes. So, you know, yeah, what does it mean that he can divide the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow? Is that just like, I don't know. I don't know. What, what's the point of saying all that? Well, like I said, I'm going to explain the word uh, of God is, is what? It gives life. So it's quick. And we got the word quick here is zeo, which means life, to be alive. So the word of God is alive and it's powerful. Uh, it's got energy. It's effectual. It's powerful. And it's sharper. Uh, tomateros, that's the one that uh, uh, to cut uh, with a single slice. Uh, than any two-edged sword piercing. Dik uh, neomai means to pierce. It's from Dio. And uh, hikanos, uh, many enough to dig to go through to penetrate, uh, even to the defighting asunder. Uh, marismos uh, is the word marizo, means to the divide. Uh, and we get the word meros from that, which is a part or a portion. So uh, the fighting asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow. So what's the dividing asunder of soul and spirit? So it's so strong, it's so quick, and it's so powerful uh, that it, it has power over the soul and the spirit, of course, because what the word of God is, is, is Jesus is the word of God. Um, of the joints and the marrow. So here you got soul and spirit, which is, uh, I guess you can say, the part of the body that's in the that's it, that's in the body. And when you're talking about the joints and the marrow, that is the body itself, uh, the joints. So you have the soul and the spirit inside uh, of the body, the joints and the marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts. Uh, it's critikos. It's a, it's, it's a critique uh, discerner. Comes from critikos, uh, which is krites, which means to judge or to judge, and from krino means to judge of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So I, I guess I don't know how else to break that down, but uh, you know, if if that was giving you trouble, then it's giving me yeah, trouble. Yeah, um, John. Um, so. In the same fashion, right, that the, they say joints and marrow. So so me as a layman, I can say, you know, joints are, you know, your shoulders, elbows, knees. And then the marrow, obviously, is the stuff inside the bones that kind of makes the bone works. What is the correlation or what is spirit and soul? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of where I'm stuck spirit at. And the soul is, is something that when, 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 when he took us from the dust of the ground, and he created us. He breathed into us to soup the soul. So that's a breath, and it's it's a spiritual thing. It's not something that you can see, uh, but you can see the joints and the marrows. This body, this tabernacle that we have, it's the housing, it's the tabernacle for the soul and the spirit, the suke and the numa. Uh, so that it's just a housing. And then when the housing goes, what happens? The soul and the spirit has to go somewhere else. So we will, this guy Barnes over here, he says, that, so when you say God is doing this, that's how powerful he is. You know, the design of this and the, and the following verse is obvious. It is, it's, 
is to show uh, that we cannot escape the notice of God. So he's, he's seen it all, that in all sincerity, uh, unbelief, hypocrisy will be detected by him. So he's going to see through it. it but what he's talking about is it, his word. Is, it, it's quick, it's life, and it's powerful. And it's so powerful that he can see through you know, your soul and your spirit. And of course, uh, if he can do that, he can, he can get into the joints of the marrow also. Um, that will be detected by him, uh, that our hearts are perfectly open for him and we should be sincere and should not attempt to deceive him, basically what that's, that's trying to say. But as far as what the soul and the spirit is, who can say? At the joints is where the marrow meets. Come again? Oh, I'm sorry. It's probably windy here. I'm writing. But I'm say I was thinking that, I mean, this is just purely layman speculation, 100%. But, like, at the joints is where the actual marrow meets each other. That's where the marrow meets, like, the other marrow is the end of the bone. That's, like, a very vital part, like, the joint and the marrow. Like, that's where they meet each other. Or they come from the inside and meets to the outside. Like there's there's a lot that can be taken out of that. Sure, and it's 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 the actual physical realm of the body. It's the joints and the marrows. You know, we the, you got the the, the the sinews and the and the all the things that hold each other together. The muscles, joints, marrow. That's all part of the body. You know, marrow is in the bones. Uh, joints hold the bones together. But uh, what it's talking about here is that God's word is so powerful that the physical body and the spiritual realm, he can see through all of that. That's basically what it's talking about. When it's talking about soul and spirit, it's talking about things that we can't see, that we don't know. That's, that's beyond our comprehension, soul and spirit. But we know about joints and marrow because we all have bodies. We all have joints. We all have marrow. Uh, you know, we have hearts and, and livers and... And fingers and toes and joints and marrow. So that basically what that is. So he he he, he can see through all of this uh, this stuff here. It's basically what that's talking about when it's talking about the word. Uh, but this, like it says, this this uh, this verse really has nothing to do with death, as as it's talking about in uh, in the McLennan and Strong here. So they just wanted to make that uh, distinction. Okay, John. Uh, last thing, and then I'll. Leave the subject alone for a soul and spirit right is it safe for me to interpret that as the soul being something distinct or individual like uh, my soul is totally separate from yours you have your thoughts your your mannerisms your likes your dislikes and then that spirit as a commonality between us as in that thing that god breathed into us that makes us that quickens us if you will right uh, yeah that that spirit um Okay. I think that spirit, yeah, is, is universal for, for us, I guess, you know, humans, you know, uh, and, and the soul. Sometimes uh, in, when you're reading uh, scriptures, they don't differentiate between soul and spirit. Sometimes they call it the same thing. Uh, you'll see it's suke, you'll see numa, and you'll see them like interchangeable. Uh, okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So as soon as the body loses feeling and motion, it is henceforth useless to the soul. So this soul is something that that lives on after, after the body uh, dies, I guess, you know, uh, which is therefore separated from it. So you're separating the body, uh, the soul and the spirit, whatever they are <laughs> from the body, which we basically know what that's all about. Um, uh, one of the can most. I ask you a question? Sure, can. Yeah, would that be the, just something like what to say, like the conscience? Yeah. Just the thought. Just the thought. Yeah, that's your synthesis. Yeah, that's that's your thoughts. Uh, uh, to to see with. So conscience is something that you know we we have. And and we can have sympathy and empathy. You know, I used to talk about sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is, is to pathos is it means to to uh, pathos with, uh, to suffer with, 
and uh, empathy is is something different. Is something that you can feel. You know, when 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 you have sympathy, you have you you're putting it on somebody, and you have sympathy for that person. But when you have empathy, you you're uh, identifying with them, so you have empathy, not sympathy. Uh, I don't know. There's a, there's a little difference between the uh, between the um, definitions of empathy and sympathy. So. So, and it's called in in most common in the Old Testament is to return to the dust or to to the earth. Hence the phrase, uh, the dust of death. Uh, it is found in the description in Genesis two seven and three nineteen, and denotes the dissolution and destruction of the body. And we can get into some of the words. Uh, Apolumi is is destruction, uh, for perish or destroy. Um, that's that's part of the killing process, uh, but the uh, the thanatos and the uh, finesco uh, means to die or to be dead, and we'll look into these. We'll we'll get into some of the definitions, but um, and we know in Genesis uh, two seven he says you know dust thou art and then dust thou shalt return. So uh, let me get another one of these up here. Hold on a second. That's Genesis 2 7. What did I say? 3 19. Just to look at it quick. Two, seven. All right. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So you got all the words in here. First, he formed man of the dust of the ground. That's the physical. There's, there's your bone and there's your marrow, uh, uh, your joints and your marrows there. And then he breathed, and that's the, the naf, nafak, or you can say they'll translate this to uh, um, uh, numa. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Let me just double check that. Genesis uh, 2 7. We'll find out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Numa. Oops. Seven. Ah. Uh, anthropos, Mold, Theos, the man. Uh, apote gay kai uh, breathe on m m m fuse to blow on hmm. that's news to me m fuseo m fuseo i'm pretty sure it was numa but i guess it's not and prosopon and the presence Uh, and breeze, uh, pnoe, breath, wind, breathe life, zoe, and ginomai, uh, man, anthropos, suke. So there's the word here for uh, for soul. So we'll, get, we'll see what the King James says. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed, in fact, into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living nephesh. Uh, okay. And I think uh, nephesh is what? Suke? Yeah. Suke. And zoe, living nephesh. All right. I had to go back and check and see what the uh, <clears throat> Septuagint says about a lot of these things. And 319 is um, 319. <clears throat> In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou was taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So that's what happens. Uh, it's all dust, <clears throat> everything. It's dirt. Jim calls it dirt. <laughs> we call it dust, okay? Uh, and it, hence the sentiment in the Ecclesiastes 12.7, the dust shall return to the earth as it was 
and the spirit unto God who gave it. <clears throat> so we know he, he breathed into us the spirit. Uh, and he gave it, and uh, we're going to return to him. So a withdrawing exhalation or removal of the breath of life, uh, hence the common terms to give up the ghost. Uh, Psalms uh, 104, 29. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalms 104, 29. 429. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to the dust. Uh, take it away their breath, their ruach. So this is the one for spirit here. That's what I thought it might have been over there, the ruach. <clears throat> you got ruach here for spirit, wind, breath. And most of the time, this would be Numa. But this one here threw me for a whirl over here. He, he breathed, Nafak, the breath, Neshama. That was new. Uh, Hasham. Uh, and die. Uh, Gava means to die. I got that down. That's one of the words. Uh, do I have it? Yeah, I got that down. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different um, words for death. Uh, six of them, I think, are in the Old Testament. So we'll cut, we'll run into a couple of those. <clears throat> so you give up the ghost. So a, a, a removal from the body. Uh, being absent from the body, a uh, departure from it, etc. This description is founded on the comparison of the body to a tent or a lodgment in which the soul dwells during its life. And that's all this, this body is, the tabernacle. Uh, death destroys this tent or house, or you could say tabernacle, and, and commands us to travel on. Uh, Job 4.21 uh, Job 4.21. Does not their excellency which is in them go away? They die, even without wisdom. And there's another word here. This is muth. That's the one you'll see. The two words, the two main words are... Uh, Thanatos in the Greek and Muth in the uh, in the Old Testament for death or dying. Uh, it's not there actually excellency which is it which is in them go away. I mean go away, they die. It leaves them. Right. <clears throat> and then uh, Isaiah thirty eight twelve. And Psalms 53, 7, like verses. I'm not going to jump back and forth looking at all of these, but you can write them down if you want. Isaiah 38, 12, and Psalms 53, 7. Hence, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 1, our earthly house of this tabernacle will be destroyed. 2 Corinthians 5, 1. And Peter calls death a putting off of this tabernacle. 2 Peter 1, 13, and 14. And classical writers speak of the soul in the same manner and what's second corinthians we'll look at second corinthians 5 and uh the other one in peter second corinthians 5 1 there's somebody out of here it says uh, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house made not with hands, eternal of in the heavens. Uh, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. And I was reading somewhere about this, not be found naked, uh, something to do with the soul. 
um, with without the body. <laughs> so, for we are in this tabernacle, and, and we do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. I forget where I was reading that, talking about um, uh, clothed upon with this house and clothed uh, that we shall not be found naked. Something to do with the, the soul leaving the body. Um, now he uh, that hath wrought us for this selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us unto us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, we are confident, I say, because this corruption can't, it has to put on the incorruption. We can't see God uh, while we're in this body. Uh, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So the only, only way we could be present with the Lord is to put off this just uh, what you want to call it, uh, you know, it's it's it was made from corrupt dust, so we can't go anywhere near God with this corrupt body. Um, and, and whether wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. So we can't accept Christ; He has to accept us. Uh, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in His body according to that He hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. So it's all going to come to light. Manifest means come to the light. And then Second Peter 1, 13 and 14. Second Peter 1. 13 and 14. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Uh, where, moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. So what's his decease? His decease is when he puts off the tabernacle, or when the body dies. That word decease is Exodus. <laughs> that's something. Uh, that's the first I've seen that. 1841. Do I have that anywhere? 1841, 1841. Let me put it over here. 1841. Pens out ink. 1841. E-X-O-D. O-S. How about that? Exodus. It comes from Ek and Hodos. <laughs> Out of the way. Wow. Deceased. Departing. 5103. We'll look at that later. I got that written down here. That's funny. Uh, 1841. Let me look and see where it is. 1841. All right, he says in Luke 9:31, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. And Hebrews 11:22, by faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Uh, he wanted to be buried in the cave at Machpelah. Uh, moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have all these things remembered. So that's a cool little word there. Quick study on that. Um, to close one's career, one's final fate, the departure of life, to decease. Good. Right. Hey. Um, classical writers, who cares about classical writers? Uh, Paul likewise uses the term. Ek duste, to unclothe oneself in reference to death, 2 Corinthians 5, 3 and 4, we just read, because the body is represented as the garment of the soul, as Plato calls it. The soul, therefore, as long as it is in the body, is clothed. 
as soon as it is disembodied, it's naked. So I guess that's where I saw it. So uh, when you talk about uh, being naked or unclothed, uh, it's, it, the body died uh, and the soul is out there going somewhere. So the terms which denote sleep are applied frequently in the Bible as elsewhere, uh, everywhere else, to death. And you can see Psalm 76.5, Jeremiah 51.39, and John 11.13, which talks about uh, sleeping uh, in terms of death. So, nor is this language used exclusively for the death of the pious, as some pretend, though this is its prevailing use. Homer calls sleep uh, and death twin brothers. Uh, the term likewise, likewise was, uh, which signified to lie down, to rest, also denote death. So these are metaphors for dying, you know, sleeping when Jesus uh, was went to... Uh, See, Lazarus, see, he says, Lazarus sleepeth. And uh, the, one of the apostles says, well, if he's asleep, good, we'll go and wake him up. He says, no, Lazarus is dead. So uh, the term they use for that is, uh, sometimes is, is sleeping. So uh, death is frequently compared with the named from a departure, a going away. Hence, verbs that import uh, signify to die. Uh, Job 21, Job 10, 21, Psalms 39 to 4. Uh, the case is the same in the New Testament, Matthew 26, 24, and even among the classics. So Matthew 26, 24. Let's look at Job real quick. Job 10, 21. See what he's talking about. Job 10, 21. And he says, before I go, whence I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. So, body won't return. The land, uh, the land of darkness, Kosen, yeah, Koshek, and the shadow of death, that's the Sal Maveth. And like I said, Maveth is another word you'll see a lot of uh, for death, Maveth, uh, Muth, so muth is the verb, maveth is the noun, and sal maveth is the shadow of death. And you see that in a lot of verses, 18 verses, the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, it's the same word there. And um, what's the other one here is um, Psalms 39.4. Psalms 39, 4. Uh, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. And he's asking that. I ask that too. Uh, but it's not going to happen. And then um, Matthew 26, 24. Matthew 26, 24. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had never been born. Uh, Judas said, is it I? Yeah. He said, yep. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, and even among the class, in connection, we may mention the terms Anna Nguyen and Anna Lucis in Philippians 1.23 and 2 Timothy 4.6. Philippians 1.23. One twenty-three. Let me get this out of here. Three, four, five. Fire at men is straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart, to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Um, so. 
in Second Timothy four six. Where am I? Second Timothy four six. For now, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing, love his epiphany, epiphania, his brightness, epiphanes, epipheno, to appear, to give light, his light. My departure is at hand. Analusis, that's what the word he was looked at. Analusis, analuo, offered, spendo. What was the other one he said? Analusis and uh, analusis and analuian, same thing, same word. Okay, uh, it, which does not mean dissolution, but the cessus, whatever that means, uh, Luke 12, 36. Let me just see if I can get this here. I'll we'll just throw this up here. All right. And, oh, it's one time. Oh, no. Uh, what's the other one? Turn right there. What was that, Luke? What did I say? Luke 12, 36? Twelve thirty-six, I think. Uh, thirty-six. And you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. So I want to make sure I got the right verse here. Sounds right. Twelve thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. So these are these are like subtle ways of saying you're going to die <laughs> you know when you die this is going to happen so um, don't have exactly the words for death but uh, death when personified is described as a ruler uh, and tyrant having vast power and a great kingdom over the over which he reigns in job 18 14. Uh, but the ancients all represented it under some figures which are not common among us. We represent it as a man with the scythe or as a skeleton, you know, the, uh, what do you call that? The, um, the undertaker, not the undertaker. The, the guy that walks around with the hood and the scythe, you know, the, uh, the death. Uh, but, the Jew, by, by, but the Jews before the exile frequently represented death as a hunter who lays snares for men. Psalms 18 and 5. Yeah. Psalms 18 and 5. Somebody's going to have to tell me what, that, what the word I'm looking for there. Psalms 18 and 5. Dr. Death or something. What are they calling it? Uh, the sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. Sorrows of hell, show, compassed me about, the snares of Mabeth prevented me. Kadam, prevent, before, to come to me, to go in front of. All right. Mm. Grim Reaper. Grim Reaper, thank you. See, that was in the back of my mind. And Psalms 5 and so oh, we didn't see 6. Uh, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. The earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. All right. And, and then 91 and 3, Psalms 91 and 3. Right. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome, noisome pestilence. Snare of the fowler. So these these are terms that they use. Uh, you know, the Jews used for uh, sometimes they said like it's a hunter coming for you. Uh, we call him the Grim Reaper. It's out there chopping off heads. And here they call it the snare of the fowler. Uh, from the noisome pestilence. Uh, after the exile, they re represented him as a man, uh, or sometimes as an angel, the angel of death, uh, with a cup of poison, uh, which he reaches to men. And you can see Destroyer, if you want to look at that. Uh, from this representation, it appears to have arisen the phrase which occurs in the New Testament, to taste death. And you'll see that in Matthew 16, 28, and Hebrews 2, 9. We don't have to go there. We know, we know what they're talking about when it says to taste death which, however, in common speech signifies merely to die, without reminding one of the origin of the phrase. The case is the same with the phrase to see death in Psalms 89 and 48 and Luke 2.26. And the gates of death uh, in Job 38.17, Psalms 9.13, and Psalms 107.18 signify the grave itself and the shadow of death. Samaveth, we just looked at uh, in Jeremiah 2 6, denotes the gloomy silence of the tomb. We got uh, Lamut, uh, uh, Skia Thanato, S K I A T H A N A T O U, <coughs> Skia Thanato. I have to look that up. Skia, we know Skia is shadow. Uh, Thanato is death, so that's the shadow of death. Oh, and 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 the Salmaveth, that's what we just looked at. Salmaveth, that's supposed to be. Uh, that's not Greek. I mean, that's not Hebrew. Don't don't pay attention to these letters here. That's like uh, a transliteration. Like if you if you hit these letters on your keyboard, and you were you were trying to print some Hebrew letters, these are the the keyboards you in the English you would have to cut, to hit. In order to get those group, those Hebrew uh, letters, the spelling, Salmaveth. Uh, so uh, death may be considered as the effect of sin, of course. Uh, Romans five twelve, the wages of sin is death. In Hebrews two fourteen, we saw Satan is said to have the power over death. Uh, not that he can, at his pleasure, inflict death on mankind, but as he was the instrument. Of first bringing death into the world, John eight forty four. Let me look at Romans five twelve quickly here. Romans five twelve. And this is just the clinic is wrong on death, uh, and there's so much, so much more that we have to do as, uh, as far as trying to understand this. Um, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So death here, in the Greek, uh, is thanatos. That's the main word for death here, in the in the in the Greek, and thanesco, uh, to be dead, to die. 2288 and 2348 finesco uh, so death by sin and death passed upon all men for that all men have sinned so the wages of sin is death we know that so thanatos is the main word there and um, um what else was i looking at here hebrews 2 14 and I'm, I could just draw up the word here, but let me look at Hebrews 2.14. It's probably Thanatos. Or Finesco here. He says, for as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death. That is the devil. And he never really had power of death he only had the power that uh, god allowed him to have and we know that when we read job you know uh, he told job you know you want to touch him go ahead 
take his, his land, his kids, his cattle, everything, but don't touch his body. And he said, okay. And then he says, you know, uh, now you can touch his body, but don't kill him. So the devil can only do uh, what God uh, wants him to do. So we can say that the devil is, uh, is God's little demon, you know. Um, I think I like my story. He said, through death, through Thanatos, he might destroy him that had power over death. Uh, and deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Uh, I don't know if uh, I fear death as much these days. Uh, I, uh, I do and I don't, but uh, I fear it a lot less than, than I did 10 years ago. And John uh, 8, 44 John 8 44 uh, I, um, you always wear it when, when somebody passes away oh I'm sorry I'm sorry for your loss and uh, oh taken to a stone all kinds of stuff and now I look at these things and I say uh, that's <laughs> you know um, John 8 44 you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it um so they're, they're talking about you know uh, satan as being you know Father of oh, the devil, a murderer. So we got murderer here. He was a murderer from the beginning. Anthro Poctonos. Anthro is man. So that's Anthropos. Anthropos is man. And Katine means to kill. So he's a he's a man killer. Anthro. Catine synonyms. Uh, was it this one? Sicario. I like that. I saw that movie. Sicarios, murderer. That's uh, like a hitman. Sicarios. And the other one is Phonius. Uh, Phonius, murderer. Well, I didn't know there was three different words for murderer here. Look at that. Sicarios, Phonius. And anthropotonos. What's this here? Same thing. Anthropotonos. Okay. So I'll have to look them up. I don't want to get into murder. We'll look up those words. Uh, study for another day. Uh, so. So the instrument of first bringing death into the world, and they say that's what Satan was, but he only does what God allows him to do. Uh, and as he may uh, be the executioner of God's wrath, which is what he was, on impenitent sinners uh, where God permits him. Uh, we saw that in Job. Uh, death is but once, Hebrews 9.27, yet certain, uh, Job 14.1 uh, and 2. Although uncertain as to the time, Proverbs 27 and 1, it is universal, Genesis 3, 19. So we're all going to die, and it's only once. Uh, it is certain, and, and everybody goes, and we don't know when. So that's what these verses will talk about. It's necessary, and it's necessary in order that God's justice may be displayed and his mercy manifested. Uh, it's desirable to the righteous. Uh, Luke 2 28 to 30. Luke 2, 28 to 30. 2, 28 to 30. Uh, then took he up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. So this is the guy, what's his name? Simeon or Simon or something. We finally saw Jesus uh, as a baby, and uh, God told him, you're not going to die until you see uh, the Messiah. And so he says, uh, uh, 
uh, he saw Jesus. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he should not see death, Thanatos, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. He saw Christ. He said, now you can take me. So he was ready to go. Uh, that's something. Uh, the fear of death is a, a source of anxiety and an alarm to many. Uh, and to a guilty conscience, it may indeed be terrible. Uh, but to a good man, it should be obviated uh, by the consideration that death is the termination of every trouble. trouble. Uh, that it puts him beyond the reach of sin and temptation. That God has promised to be with the righteous even to the end. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 5. Uh, then uh, that Jesus Christ has taken away the sting, 1 Corinthians 15, 55 and 56, uh, and that it introduces him to a state of endless felicity. So we want to be there. We want to be 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Uh, oh, death, where is that sting? That's the, the other one in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. So he's not afraid of it. Uh, we are confident that saying, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, wherefore we labor that present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Second time we're reading that, but it's always good. So if we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. If where one is. <laughs> and uh, we'll have the confidence. If I, I'd like to have the confidence that Paul had, you know, finished the course, kept the faith. And the other thing... I can't remember right now. Um, okay, death, when applied to the animal nature, properly signifies a dissolution of a failure of all its powers and functions. So when applied to the spiritual nature or souls of men, it denotes a corresponding disorder therein, uh, a being spiritually dead in trespasses and sin. Uh, Romans 8, 6, Ephesians 2, 1. Uh, Colossians 2.13 and Jude 12. Romans 8.6. Dead in trespasses and sin. Romans 8.6. Romans 8.6. Uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it's ekther, it's against, it's an enemy, uh, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, and hopefully this is us, but we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, and we'll look up a couple other things here, See what this is. Uh, Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. 3. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and by, by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And hopefully we're not walking in that anymore, or as much as we used to. And this quickens not in here. This is, yeah. Uh, hath he quickened? It's not in there. And you, who and you who were dead in trespasses, uh, hath he quickened? I don't know why they put that in there, but it's not in the original text. All right. So what we know, quickened is bringing to life. So it's kind of like understood there. So we were dead in trespasses and sins. In Colossians two thirteen. Colossians 
And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Being dead in sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. So they were uncircumcised in the flesh, the, uh, the Gentiles. Um, but they were also dead in their sins. And quickens together here is the uh, Zuz, Zuzopeo. Zuzopeo is uh, Zopeo with the Zeus in front of it. Uh, Zoom together with. Quicken together with, basically what that means. Uh, okay. And Jude 12. Jude 12, talking about being dead and trespasses and sins. Uh, these are spots in your feasts of charity. When, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. So these are vessels of wrath here. Clouds they are without water, carried away, carried about of winds, trees, whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's the skotos, zotos, something, I love that word. The blackness, the zophos, skotos, the blackness of darkness. Whoa. So these are vessels of wrath here. Um, what was that? I'm going to look at something here. I forgot what it was. Oh, twice dead. That's the second death. When it talks, the revelation talks about the second death. That's it. You ain't coming from back from that. Well, if you're you're a vessel of wrath in the first death, you're, you're done. But the second death is uh, you ain't you ain't coming back from that. So when it says twice dead, that's what it's talking about. The second death, and. Um, that has no power on us, that second death. You know, everybody dies, you know, uh, and you go where you got to go. Uh, that second death is the final separation. Like we said, with the, the death is, is, is separation, you know, and I, I believe that's what hell is. It's separation. Uh, it's darkness, blackness of darkness forever. Skoto, Zophos, uh, forever. And there, there's no light there. And um, knowing that uh, there is God and you're never going to see him. You finally come to the realization that God exists and you're never going to see him. That's hell. And, and some people, uh, they're going to have their fits up in the, in the sky cursing God. And that's the unrepentant they're talking about in Revelation. After the uh, the vials are being poured out, you know we we get the uh, we get the seven seals and the seven trumpets and and these are like warnings, you know and uh, they 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 burn up uh, some of the earth and kill some of the people and uh, and hopefully uh, we get on our faces uh, every day and and ask for forgiveness. And um, if we don't listen to the the vial, the the, uh, the trumpets and the uh, and the seals, then the vials come, and there's no turning back from the vials. The vials did uh, total destruction. So you got trumpets, seals, and 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 vials. And uh, when the vials start, that's it. And people will be angry. People will be mad. So, you know, these are the ones that are going to say, "Don't you know who I am, God? <laughs> don't you know what I did all my life? All that good stuff." I, Walk the old lady across the street. Uh -huh. That's not how it works. So the term death is metaphorically applied to denote an utter failure of customary functions so that the thing spoken of can no longer act according to its nature. You're dead. Thus in Amos 2.2, 2, Moab shall die in tumult. That is, the king and the government shall lose their power and the nation be brought into subjection and slavery. So in Romans 7.8, it says, without the law, sin was dead. 
That is, without the law, sin does not exert its power. And on the other hand, it is says, sin revived and I died. Sin got strength to act and I lost my power to resist. I was not the same man as before. Sin destroyed my power. So, but it says, without sin, there is no, there is no death. There is, you know, without, without law, uh, sin has no power. The only reason why there is sin, because there's a law that says you can't do. So, and then over here, oh, look at this. The second death in Revelation 2.11 is so-called in respect to the natural or temporal as coming after it. It implies everlasting punishment. So that's the second death. It's everlasting punishment. Uh, and we'll see... Um, and that's in uh, 2.11 and, uh, and 21.8, 211. Uh, sure, 2.11, I don't think it's in 2.11, let me see again. 2.11. Uh, oh yeah, okay. He that hath an ear, and talking to the churches, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. See that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. Look at second death. And, um, um, let me see. Uh, uh, sec and death and hell will cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Uh, and 21.8, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable murderers who among us, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second, second death. So, we don't want to see that. Who's talking over here? Uh, somebody put their hand up? No? Okay. Oh. Uh, and this is just one reading here. I mean, uh, I got dozens of books here on this death, uh, theological aspect of death. On this topic, we present some views different from those uh, usually entertained, but which modern science appears to justify and even to demand. Death may be defined as the termination of life. Beyond question, it had been possible for God, if such has been his pleasure, to have made all creatures under a law of life. And he could have. Um, and some people say that in the beginning, before we fell, we were eternal, uh, immortal. I don't know about that, but uh, the, the, he says, after you eat, you shall surely die. So I, it means, I guess, before that, they weren't going to die. So uh, scripture assures us that man, at least, was at first placed conditionally under this law. There is, however, decisive evidence that from the beginning, all other terrestrial life was constituted under the law of death. Uh, the re I don't know if, if that's the case, uh, that, you know, man was immortal to, to start out with, and then he lost it. Uh, the reproductive and assimilating organs and powers common to all living creatures and the destructive organs, instincts and habits of birds and beasts of prey unmistakably contemplate as they provide for a system or a constitution of things in which death should reign. Uh, I don't want to. Pick, we want to get into all of this, but uh, there's a lot, a lot in here. We can't go through all of it, but it's in the McClinic and Strong, um, talking about creatures, uh, animal nature. Uh, that can sound with the male the creator is a hard question with no light yet given to man and able to fully resolve. Um, animals talk about animal man. Um, Man himself is involved in a common doom. It is appointed unto all men once to die. The reigning fact, man's death, seems to force upon us the conclusion that death is a physical necessity or a universal law extending to all material organizations, however otherwise psychologically distinguished or divinely alive. So we all got to die, and, it's that, and that's a good thing. Um, let me see. Uh, length of day, even to length of days. Forever and ever. Thus, scripture informs us was in the beginning provisionally ordained. The threatening of death as the penalty of the breach of the covenant is rightly understood to imply the promise of deathless and incorruptible life as 
so long as the covenant should stand. So this guy is under the impression that, you know, before we ate or partook of uh, the tree of life, that we were uh, supposedly immortal. But I don't know. Well, sin came, then we died, you know. Uh, and the, the tree of life in the midst of the garden, if not by its physical uh, virtue, the means of perpetual renovation. So yeah, like you know, we we ate from the the tree of the the fruit of the, the of the knowledge of good and evil, uh, and death was was the consequence. Uh, but then he put the cherubim in the way to keep us away from the tree of life. Because we now we have the knowledge of good and evil, and if we eat of the tree of, of life, we'll live forever, according to you know the Bible. Uh, so uh, he couldn't allow us to to be sinful and live forever. So, um, and the tree of life in the midst of the garden, if not by its physical virtue, the means of perpetual renovation was certainly the sacramental pledge of God's purpose to preserve life and violate while man was steadfast to the covenant so but we weren't so we ate and uh we shall surely die uh thus runs the tenor of the covenant or the constitution under which man's life was originally given and held so thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for in that day thou eatest thou shalt surely die um spiritually yeah I, I guess that was what what, what we were talking about uh but th th does it mean that we'll have we were immortal and and if we take partake of this tree we're going to uh, have the the, the the possibility to die you know one day uh, does that was that what that that what means you know i don't know and in terms equally explicit in the transgression of the law is the entrance and reign of death over man is cried. Uh, but one man's, by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. So you're saying there was no death before the sin? You could say that, you know, if you go logically. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. But we had no choice. We had to sin because why? Because we were made from this corrupt dust. <laughs> so we had to sin. The first thing we're going to do, when God says you can't do this, we're going to say, oh, yeah. So uh, let it be observed that uh, this declares the cause of death as it reigns over all men only. It affirms nothing respecting the cause of death as it reigns over other orders of creatures in the present or in preceding stages of the world's existence. I don't know. Um, I didn't read this before. I'm just going through it now. Uh, Death. Some of these guys go off on tangents. You don't know what they're uh, where they're gonna go. But uh, you know, he's, he's just throwing some questions out there. He's not uh, like like most of us. He just had these questions and, and some theories. You know, some people say that you know before we uh, partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we were immortal, and then we died. I mean, you can make a logical assumption, but uh, I don't know if that's uh, that's really uh, the case, you know, because I can't see how if we're made from corrupt us, we can we can live forever, you know, immortal uh, before we uh, partook of the tree. So that's as far as I go with that uh, in my mind. Um, body and spirit that may prove a birth and about the father of the spirit. Um, Death extends to the entire man and to every part of his nature. Against himself, the threatening was directed. In the day thou eatest, thou shalt die. Beyond doubt, the outward man perished. And surely the inner man, the subject of that sin, of which the body is but the instrument, cannot have escaped the force of the dread sentence. Of course, if the body dies, uh, it dies. Uh, God... Uh, God's word assures us that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Nay, it speaks of a man as already dead, who yet lives in the body, dead therefore spiritually. So that's what it's talking about. Uh, when he says, thou shalt surely die, it's talking about spiritual. Uh, because I believe we, 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 we weren't uh, immortal. We were, uh, excuse me, yeah, we, we are mortal. So I don't think we, we were ever immortal. Uh, even before the uh, the fall, 
Uh, on the other hand, it speaks of men now alive through grace who shall never die. Okay. Well, yet the graves are ready for them. So we're, we're going to die, and the graves are ready for us, but we shall never die. <laughs> so you could say that, too. Uh, men who walked after the course of the world and live in the pleasure uh, are pronounced dead in sin. Uh, dead while they live. So you could be dead while you're alive. Uh, which is what some of us were and some of us are. Uh, and while whoso loveth his brother has passed from death to life, and he that hateth his brother abides in death. So we, we can die and still live, and yet we can be alive and, and dead while we're alive. How does that sound? <laughs> it's an oxymoron, if I ever heard one. Uh, these uh, scriptures, while they distinguish between bodily and spiritual death, represent uh, both as included in the sentence and threatened and executed against the sinner. So to what effect then does death exert its power upon the body and the spirit severally uh, and together? Well, uh, it's not uh, unimportant to observe that this is not extinction of existence or annihilation either of the one or the other. So it's not talking about physical uh, annihilation or spiritual annihilation. Uh, for, for a time, the body retains its form and its substance, however changed, is never lost. Uh, much more may be presumed shall the spirit survive. Not indeed that spirit more than body is immortal independently of God's will, but that seeing he preserves our inferior part he will much more preserve the higher and more kindred product of his created power. So the, the body's going to die, but this uh, the spirit uh, will, uh, will live on. Uh, the effects of death upon the body itself are a matter of common observation. It, it, it's stinking, quicking, you know. Uh, when they came to the Lazarus, his, his, his sister Mary says, roll the stone away. What are you kidding? By now he stinks. You know. <laughs> And she, he said, no. Uh, so it, it quickly turns its comeliness into corruption and finally reduces its form and structure into shapeless dust. So that's what we are. Dust. So from the dust, we're going to the dust. But the spirit will live on. The effect of bodily death on the spirit of the man whose nature is thus divided, it may be more difficult to estimate. Uh, this may depend on in part on the value of the earthly portion he has lost. I'll see how that matters. And partly on the future portion on which he has entered. Okay. But it cannot be indifferent either to the child of sorrow or to the subject of grace, more than to the heir of this world, whom it has stripped of his whole inheritance of good. So what, what, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What good is the profit of man? To gain the whole world, but lose his eternal soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So while we look on the, the deserted and impassive corpse and say, it is all over with him now, the disembodied spirit must still find itself the subject of a maimed and imperfect nature. Consciousness belongs to its nature and must endure while it has a being. Its proper life lies in the hot, I mean, uh, its proper life lies in the harmony and subjection of its powers and dispositions to the nature and will of God. Its death in contrariety and enmity to him. This involves the disruption of a holy and dutiful relation to the father of spirits and, by inevitable consequence, a deprivation of the fruits of his love and favor on which life and blessedness depend. So your, your sins have separated you uh, be, be, between you and God. So I don't know if that's talking about the second death or what, but, you know, um, the spirit leaves the body and it, and, and it goes where it's supposed to go. Uh, I think that's what he's trying to say. And second death is, uh, is pure, uh, pure hell. Uh, and let me see. It may tend further to, to clear this subject, to notify, um, to notice briefly the order and process through which the work of death is consummated. Though incurred instantaneously, 
on the act of transgression, talking about the, the sin is the way the wages of sin is death. Uh, its effects follow by successive stages and at several more or less distant intervals. So this death uh, could be a gradual thing uh, and not like a bullet in the head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sin, as caused by sin, the spiritual man, as the proper subject and source of the evil, first feels its power. Its very touch intercepts all happy intercourse with the holy God. Uh, this was felt and seen on the day that Adam sinned. His fear and flight at the voice of the Lord God in the garden was the unmistakable symptom of a soul already dead in sin. That's good. Which dared not to live with God. While it's his expulsion from God's presence marked no less clearly that God had ceased to live with him. Thus was executed the letter, the word which God has spoken. In the day thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. So that's separation right there. Uh, but the work of death, thus begun, does not stop here. The destruction of the creature's relation to God, it may well be conceived, must introduce disorder into all the relations and interests of its being, nor, unless with a view to some ulterior design of signal judgment of a more signal mercy, might its full development and consummation be long delayed. So it can go on for a long time. Uh, but in subservancy to this end, does man live on in the body for a season, though as to God he is dead while he liveth. So this is talking about this, this spiritual death. Um, yet it is but for a little time, whatever uh, the, be the result of this day of forbearance, the work of death goes on, the body is dead because of sin. Um, the mortal crisis which awaits every individual man in his own time uh, as distinguished from spiritual it is called temporal death as super adding exclusion from the things of earth and time to the laws of all happy interest in God and that's what happens when we do that we, we, we get further from God and we think that you know at least I did I didn't think he loved me at all I said well I'm going to continue in this uh, sex drugs rock and roll here for until I get uh, hit upside the side of the head with a spiritual two by four. So, and I thought God didn't love me. So, uh, and <laughs> he hated what I was doing. Uh, but I guess uh, he had other plans for me. Uh, there remains but one further stage before it reaches its complete and final issue both in the individual and the race. When the designs of the divine administration in our world are finished, the bodies of all who sleep in dust shall be organized. There shall be a resurrection of the just and the unjust, while the just, by faith through grace, shall be raised to life incorruptible and glorious. The unjust, impenitent and unbelieving, shall awake to the resurrection of damnation. That's the second death. Uh, the whole man go away from the glory and joy of God's presence into everlasting punishment. This is the second death. Okay. Um, there was something else I wanted to well, say, but again, yeah, there shall be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. And that's in the scripture. I can't forget. I think that's in Daniel. And there's another one in John. Uh, so resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. That's just that's, that's true. Um, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting, uh, not destruction, but uh, we know that Thanatos is separation. Uh, death brothers, brothers of death. <laughs> How about that order, huh? And there was something, uh, what else was I looking up? I, I was looking up a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but that I'm, I'm glad I got that uh, looking and strong there. But let me give you some, some definitions. And we'll, and we'll look at these uh, in the course of, uh, of time here. Um, I, I have, this is the Concise Dictionary, the Dictionary of Authority, Eastern's Dictionary, International Sp Standard Bible Encyclopedia. It's in Naves. We have themes on death. This is in the back of your Bible. This is, uh, if you copy these numbers down, uh, if you have a Thompson chain, page, I don't know if it's page, it's, it's theme number 2158, 
uh, theme number 2162, theme number 2159, uh, theme number 1360 in the back of your Thompson chain, uh, 2160, uh, 1698, uh, 2163, <coughs> excuse me, 2161. I guess you can go from 2160 on, I want 2158 all the way down, 2160, whatever. And look at this, all these themes on death, the death of Christ, uh, Christ's death, eternal death, 2163, that should be a good one, 2160, eternal death, spiritual death, references to spiritual death, um, Genesis 2.17, uh, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in that day thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Proverbs 8 and 36, but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Uh, Ezekiel 18, 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son uh, shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him. So that's like you can say the resurrection of the dead, the just and the unjust. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna go your way. Romans six twenty three for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you got both of them in there. Uh, eight and six for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Who can you feel that life and peace? And you know, when you're carnally minded, it's it's like a death. It's a separation from God. When you're carnally minded, you want to hide from God, like Adam did. You know, and you put the put the put the. I I heard you coming and I hid because you know, what do you mean? How, why'd you do that? Because I was naked. How'd you know you were naked? <laughs> Somebody opened my eyes. I got the knowledge. James one fifteen. Uh, then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Uh, 520, let him know that he which covereth the sinner from the ever of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So I got to find somebody to cover my sin, huh? <coughs> oh, converteth. For he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way. Okay, that's good. Revelation 21.8, we read that. That's the second death, right? Yeah, the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable. So these are all in the back of your Thompson chain. Uh, if you care to look back there, the, the gates of death. Um, the gates of death. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or has thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? That's God talking to Job. Uh, have mercy on me, O Lord, consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me, that thou liftest me up from the gates of death, gates of the grave. Um, and I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will be my trade, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <coughs> the nearness of death, death of the righteous, death of the wicked. So you got 2160 and 2161 and 2162 in the back of your chomps and chain right there. I'll uh, give you all of this. Uh, the shadow of death, all the verses with the shadow of death on it. Yeah. Uh, sleep of death, sought death, <laughs> spiritual death, universal death, vanquished death, death. So well, there's a lot of stuff. And th this is the uh, the main word in the Old Testament. <clears throat> uh, mut, Marvet, Mamut, and uh, Temuta is death. And that's TWOT 1169. I can read up on that. And this other one here is, um, I don't know what that is. And like I said, um, let me see some more themes over here. Dead in sin, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> themes on dead in sin. And that's 21. So like I said, if you go to your Thompson chain, you'll go from like 2160 all the way down 2164 you'll see all this dead, dead to sin get this out of here all right and um and like i said this is the main word here <clears throat> uh maveth 160 verses 160 times and muth 835 times and it's twot 1169 
and we can't go through all this right now, but I'm just giving it to you. And uh, <coughs> there's another word here for dead. Uh, Rafa, uh, dead or deceased, uh, ghosts of the dead, shades, spirits, and it's TWOT 2198. <coughs> Some water. A lot of stuff in here. Ghosts uh, of the dead, shades of death. Okay. And that was three. <coughs> And four is a carcass. So I get into a carcass looking at carcasses and dead bodies. And this is the word uh, pegger. <coughs> Pagar means faint. Uh, TWOT 1732 corpse monument Stella. And you can read on uh, <coughs> carcasses and corpses and things like that. On this and then we got um, another carcass one here uh, this is uh, Nabala carcass dead body dieth of itself death <clears throat> 5034 is Nabal uh, or Nabal to fade fade away to wear away and you can look at the uh, TWOT 1286 and get all you can on that so like I said, a lot of stuff to look at here. And then um, another one for died here <coughs> is Gava, 1478. Died to give up the ghost, dead perish, uh, TWOT 328. <coughs> uh, some good stuff in there. I, went, I read a little bit of this. All right. Um, let's see, bibliography. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, these are the Greek, Greek words. You got Thanatos, 2288. You got Thanesco, 2348. You got Apo Thanesco, uh, to be die, to, to die, to be the point of death. Apo Thanesco. And then you got um, Necros, which means dead, 132 times. Apolumi, perish and destroy. Destruction uh, comes from Apo and Luo. <clears throat> uh, oh, oh, excuse me, Olatheros. It means destruction. Uh, Apo and Olatheros to destroy. And here's Olatheros. There it is. Okay, destruction, ruin, destroy. And all, all has to do with death, too. And there's other words here. We got um, something about a corpse. <coughs> I was looking at. And um, this one here is uh, Potoma, uh, means a dead body or a carcass or a corpse. And I didn't know there was so much stuff on this. I mean, you, every time I, I get into a study, I say, yeah, how much can there be? <clears throat> and there's a lot. So, and uh, I get into looking at the corpses and how they take care of the dead bodies. And you get into burial. And this, all this stuff is good here. I, I read all of these. They're all good. Uh, concise dictionary on burial. And, and and this one is good because it shows you where everybody's buried, man. It talks about um, from Moses all the way down to like uh, David and, and all of all of the kings uh, where they're buried, and it tells you where the place of they're buried. Uh, and then you got uh, another one in uh, faucets where they talk about the uh, burial rites and all that stuff. And this is a lot here. ISBE. I was just looking at that. For a while, and there's so much here. Look at all of this um, places, boom. And then knaves, of course. Uh, rites of death, soon after death, with spices. The beer, uh, or use that. You know, beer is really not a coffin. <clears throat> Attended by relatives, Jacob, as in the children of uh, Stephen. Lack of uh, disgrace. If you're not buried, uh, they don't like you for some reason. Um, you got directions given about uh, before death, burial of Gog, requiring seven months, burying places, uh, bought by Abraham. That's the cave of Machpelah. He's in there with his wife, <coughs> Leah. It's, uh, you know, you would think that, you know, he loved Rachel. 
so much that that she would be uh, buried with him. But she died when she was giving birth to uh, <coughs> Benjamin on the way to Bethlehem. So that's why it says Rachel crying for her children in Bethlehem because she's buried in uh, Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Eph <coughs> and so, you know, Abraham's buried with Leah. And she was the one, you know, that gave the first four kids right off the bat. And uh, and um, she, she, Leah knew, I think she was more spiritual than, than Rachel. Rachel was, to me, like a spoiled brat. Uh, but Leah was the real loving wife to Abraham. And I guess that's why they're buried together in the cave of Machpelah. And Jacob's in there with his wife. And uh, they brought um, jo um, Joseph over there. <clears throat> and there's somebody else in there, too. I forget who it is right now. <coughs> Abraham oh, Isaac. And uh, what's her name? <coughs> it was in there. That's it. I'm Jacob. I'm talking about Jacob uh, and, and, and Leah. Uh, Abraham and Sarah, of course. <clears throat> um, Isaac and, uh, and the other one. And then uh, Jacob and, and Leah uh, are in there. Not Jacob and, uh, and Rachel. I'm sorry I got the Abraham confused with, uh, with Jacob there. <coughs> and um, there's a lot, a lot of stuff here. You know, tombs, found the hills, and the kings, uh, closed with stones, sealed, marked with pillars, inscriptions, painted, garnished. Uh, you can't touch it. You know, it'd be clean to unclean. So there's a lot of stuff here on, on death and, and burial. <clears throat> so we can get into that, too, uh, in, in time. And here's another one here for burying. I found it interesting. This stuff on burial is, is interesting. <clears throat> a lot of different places we can go with that. Um, it's uh, Kabar 69.12 in the Hebrew TWOT 1984. All right, we'll look at that. And then there's another one here. This would be, okay, we were looking at these verses here. Uh, Herod was dead. All right. Look at that, but this dead here is tell you, tell you Teo. Yeah, I just looked at that before I came on. <clears throat> uh, and we know what teleos is, it means to be finished or to complete. Teleotes, and that comes from this here. Well, this comes from that. Uh, tell you to tell you Teo, uh, means to be dead or deceased, to finish, to bring to an end. And it comes from uh, teleo, to finish, to fulfill, to accomplish. And another one here is uh, the death of Herod. Uh, tell you, Tay, the death of uh, Herod. And there's one verse there. And there was something else that, uh, oh, this one verse here in Genesis 46 and 4. Now, I don't know how many times I've read this verse, and, I, and now I know what it means. Uh, I will go down with thee into Egypt. I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. I didn't know what that meant until today. It's when, when somebody puts their hands on your eyes and they close your eyes when you die. <clears throat> so Joseph shall put his hand uh, on your eyes. That's a good metaphor there. And that's in Genesis 46 and 4. And what do we got here? And... We were just looking at that, okay? And we were just looking at that. So that's that. So <clears throat> we'll uh, we'll continue with this. I think it, we'll get some good stuff out of it. And I want to thank Alex for <laughs> for suggesting that. You know, bring yeah. it up to me. Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll take a moment of silence here. And uh, Brother Timmy, you want to pray for us? Okay. Father, we all come before you and myself. We're not worthy for any reason. It's only because you exist and help us to be what you intended us to be, to die to self, 
to throw off this flesh that we are fighting every day. Wanting its wants, its desires, it's it's just playing out sin. Lord, this what we talked about today, I'm sure it hit us all just like a an arrow, you know, pointed right between your eyes. We go into the mind. Father, I ask if it be your will to forgive us of our sins as well, because we deserve death. We deserve to die. I hope that you keep an eye over Pastor Jim, John, and all the people of grace and truth, whether they be domestic or abroad. Please be with them. Lord, I don't know what else to say. Because the more I know about you, and you said, you know, through your word, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I actually and really believe that. Yes, it's scary, Lord. I'm not going to lie about it. Would you tell us to fear not, little flock? Lord, this world's scary, and the things that's happening upon the earth right now are scary, but, you know, when people ask me how I'm doing, I say, another day above ground, like my brother John would say all the time, as a blessing. Lord, keep us together. And I don't know what else to ask for is just thank you for just being able to be alive one more day. I ask his name, your son's authority, and his blessed name, Jesus. Amen. All right, thank you, brother. Yep, another day above ground. Thank you, Alfred. Amen. Yep. What happened here? Uh, James and Ann, they made it. Yay, Michelle made it. Yay. Uh, Michael made it. Yay. Kravitz made it. Yay. Everybody's here. Everybody's here that's here. Body <laughs> cool. Uh, that's all right. It woke up my eyes. It, it, I was hoping for something like this, and I didn't know what it was, but when you start talking death, it's kind of like, okay. You know, I, I had my, my, uh, my clinic and strong. I had to run in there and get the, the day volume. And uh, yeah. I wasn't yeah. really knowing that you were reading from the clinic and strong, just kind of like, wow, that's pretty neat, you know, seeing something like that. Yeah. 